Hi everyone. I have your first flip lecture here. It's flip lecture number one, Nature of Science. What is science? The Nature of Science is a list of rules or criteria that we in science use to determine if something is not only scientific, but also to look at the way science is done, the processes of science. So we're going to start today with um, the ideas of what makes something scientific. So here we go. Um, we know that something is scientific if it answers the questions, uh, answers anybody's questions about the natural world. Um, the natural world could be us talking about weather or climate including Earth's processes like uh, tornadoes or earthquakes or um, tsunamis, things like that. It could also be uh, chemistry, atoms, protons, electrons, uh, making up solutions, chemical reactions. Maybe in space, maybe we might be talking about black holes or planets or nebula. And then it also could be the environment, so probably what you think of typically is like marine biology or ecology or just general biology. Um, but the natural world is, is anything that um, you, know, you, you could experience living here on Earth, and that includes space. Science is one way of knowing. So again, we talked about um, how these other ways, philosophy, sociology, ethics, religion, and, or spirituality have these uh, this value in people's lives, but that they cannot, um, that science doesn't answer questions about those topics, and those topics cannot answer scientific questions. So science is just one way of knowing. We do have these other ones. It's not a collection of facts. It isn't anything about superheroes and fairies are definitely not part of science. Science is based on evidence. So we use evidence in science to um, look at the strength of ideas, to look at the weaknesses of ideas, and maybe make some modifications. As we gather new evidence, we have to modify our ideas or we might revise our ideas to make them a little better or sometimes they just work with our story currently and they strengthen our story or our ideas. Um, you might collect evidence out in the field so when a scientist works outside it's out in the field and you might collect data in real time. You might collect data about the past through fossils or other scientific tests or you might collect data in what you guys typically think of as science in a lab. This is a chemistry lab. We also know that science is predictable. That means that we can learn from what we have done in the past and use it to make predictions about uh, future possible outcomes. Um, we use things like formulas that other scientists have come up with, so that's Einstein. And that's uh, E equals MC, so energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. So we could use that to make um, any predictions about an object's mass or the energy of the object's mass if it was moving at the speed of light. Um, we might use models. Here's a air, air temperature or a climate model. Um, we might use it to make predictions about how the Earth is now and how the Earth might be in the future. Or we might use a, some laws that we come up with, so in this case, Newton's laws, um, and in this case, inertia, which means that things in motion stay in motion until they're stopped. So you can see this guy, he got stopped by something, and he's flipping over the handlebars of his bike. But we know, based on our understanding of inertia, that these kinds of things might happen. So we use what we already know to make logical assumptions or predictions about our future, and these are scientific predictions. Uh, you should also know that science is tentative. So um, a long time ago, most of the people thought the world was flat, and right now we have some flat earthers out there too, so that's really interesting. Um, but scientists started to gather evidence that said otherwise. It said that the earth was round. As we gathered new evidence, this goes back to science, being based on evidence, we had to modify what we thought because it didn't fit with the flat earth. We needed to change our view and our perspective and our hypotheses about how the earth really was. 
We say science is tentative because it's ever-changing, it's ever-growing, it's ever-evolving, and that as we gather more evidence, we really are strengthening our ideas. Even if we're saying, oh, that didn't work, we're ruling out the possibilities of the wrong, and we're filling it in with a better explanation um, using what we have as evidence at the time. So here's a funny joke for you. It says, I'm not deploying my parachute until scientists get more certain about this gravity stuff. So gravity is a theory, um, which means that it's our best explanation at the time um, and with all of our evidence, and we know what happens if this guy doesn't pull his parachute. Science is a human endeavor. So we have scientists all over our world, many cultures, many beliefs, um, many different experiences, languages, and all of that comes into play. So societal values and cultural values will come into play. Personal values will come into play. And all the stuff that has, has to do with being human will be a part of how they do science in the world. Uh, we do use a series of checks and balances. We call this peer review in science. And when a scientist does experiments and they try to publish their, their work, their paper, that says, hey, here's what I've done and here's what I found out, other scientists... They scrutinize, they look at and review this scientist's work, and they either accept or reject it. And so in science, we don't just believe something because the scientist said it. We actually have to look at the science and say, is this good science? Is this not good science? And what works in here and what is what makes sense? Um, but yeah, we use peer review, so it's not just believed because someone said it was so. And we know that science keeps going and going and going that it's never going to be ending. We're never going to have all the answers in the world. Science, again, cannot answer everything. And I really like this because this means that we're never going to know everything. There's always going to be some mystery about our world that, that we're trying to understand. And um, I think it makes science really cool. Before we finish today, I have a little task for you. I would like you to determine if each of these ideas can be understood scientifically using your current knowledge of NOS, Nature of Science. I want you to explain how you made your decisions. So I want to know, are fairies understood by science? And I want you to tell me based on the essentials of NOS and what we just went over in class today. So you might want to refer to the paper from last week called Essentials of NOS. It's in your notebook. I want to know, how did you make that decision? Are dinosaurs understood scientifically? How did you make that decision? And is gravity, the idea of gravity, understood scientifically? And how did you make that decision? Remember, all of your ideas should be explained using what you know about the nature of science. Good luck.